So I have a question I wanted to share, and it's about emotional numbness or um, dissociation. And dissociation, there's different degrees to it, some more intense than others. But really, it's, it could be described as just a lack of emotion, not feeling anything, feeling like there's a void or you're cut off from your emotional body entirely. And Tom asked me a question. It was a long email, but he was basically trying, he was describing what this void was and how do I come to terms with living with this void and I wanted to address this here because I don't think really I think very few people understand what dissociation is or this emotional numbness because when we think about it we tend to think of numbness as a lack of something it's like a void right it's like a, there's, there's just nothing there nothing's going on inside me so we think of it as nothing. Now, in this video, I'm going to try and make the argument here that will help us understand dissociation a bit more, that it isn't nothing. In fact, really what's happening is that it's something and it's really, it takes an awful lot of energy to create the sensation of numbness or dissociation in your body. So you see, if we don't understand that, we're going to perceive it incorrectly. And we'll be trying to fill something that's already full. Okay, we have this need to feel emotion. And, you know, that can lead to all sorts of problems in our life. If we're not feeling anything, we'll reach out even for a negative experience or a negative emotion to fill this void. So if we can understand, actually, there is something already taking place here. It's not an absence. It's not a lack. It's not a void. It's actually really an energy intense experience that's taken place. So let me explain myself, okay? Let me explain what I mean by this. Great example. Let's say you're, you're, you're you know those kitchens that have those huge walk-in fr uh, freezers, okay? Or, you know, you walk into that freezer and it's, it's really cold in there. All the, the, the food is really, really cold, obviously. And, you know, <clears throat> the door gets locked accidentally and now you're, you're stuck in this freezer well what are you going to notice is i'm starting to feel numb okay after a while you're going to get really really cold and it's a numbness it starts to set in after a while it's really uncomfortable feeling to be that cold but then you're going to start feeling numb think of all the cold the, the food in there it's entirely frozen okay it's solid it's a lack of anything it, it is we we perceive it as as nothing happening with it okay stuck so if you think about that for a second, well, how is that experience in, in the freezer taking place? What's required for that to take place? Well, what happens if there's a power outage in that area? And now there's no electricity going into the motors that are helping to cool the, the freezer. Okay, all that food will eventually start to thaw out. Okay, and if you're stuck in there, you'll be very grateful for that. The point here is that think about it as for something to be held numb or cold or stuck like that, there has to be elect you know, electricity or energy driven into it to create that process, to create that experience in the body. So rather than dissociation or emotional numbness as being nothing, it's actually been driven energy has been driven directly into that experience. Now, the reasons for that are typically safety. Okay, a person will get to the point in life where there's been so much pain or disappointments or broken relationships or whatever it may be that the nervous system decides that's enough. Okay, I'm no longer going to process any of these uh, painful emotions. Now, does that mean that the, so that's, there's an injury, there's a wound. That's what really what trauma is, is, a, is a, an injury, a psychic injury, an emotional injury. Those, those blocking it out and refusing to deal with it actually do anything with the wound itself. Of course it doesn't. So the wound is still there, can't be dealt with anymore. Much the way, you know, if you, if you hurt your, yourself physically and you need to escape danger, 
the body will numb out that pain, it will spike your adrenaline and it will bring you to safety, you'll run away. So with dissociation, there is a pain there and to deal with it, it, the pain that's coming up needs to be held back. Now this actual holding back, you could call it uh, su suppression, repression, is uh, an activity that requires a lot of energy. Okay, so the emotion is coming up, the pain is coming up, and there's a, a resistance to it. And this is this experience is a lot of energy. Now, it's 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 almost as if nothing's happening now, or a feeling of stuckness or frozen feeling, or uh, we 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 perceive it as nothing's happening because really, when the nervous system feels completely free and not in danger, emotions are always moving. Okay, our emotional bodies are always very active and there's a flow of negative, positive, all sorts of emotions. But when this happens, it's like there's a stalemate. So if you can realize, it, you know, it, does, it doesn't actually feel, because it's, it's happening automatically, the nervous system is all automatic, it doesn't feel like we ourselves are actually resisting it quite often. This is happening, this is the nervous system doing this. Okay, so, you know, I mean, do you feel the energy right now that it requires to pump your heart? There's no energy perceived from you in in the activity that in the energy in that in that process. So much this this whole holding down of the negative or the the, the pain uh, from the trauma is all happening automatically without our need to actually control it. So this awareness of this will help us to understand that when I'm experiencing this void or this nothingness, it's not nothing, it's this. There's actually something stuck. It's actually a sort of like an equation that comes to zero because there's negative and positive forces at play. So with that awareness, what we're gonna to start to do with it is not try to fill it because there's nothing to be filled, right? It's just a stuck movement of emotion in the body. And to start to say this is something happening, this experience itself is something that needs to be respected. It needs to be, awareness needs to be brought to it. It needs to be allowed to be what it is rather than fixed or filled uh, because that won't work. Okay, it never, you can't fill something that's already full, right? It's not a void at all. So, Another thing I've talked about in the past with people is you can't force yourself to feel things. And that's one of the big mistakes we make when we're going through dissociation. It's this desire to feel something. Really, it's a desire to get unblocked or unstuck, right? Now, you, hopefully you'll have support around you um, when you're starting to feel and deal with the old traumas. And that can be, you know, all sorts of traumas, old, isolated, PTSD, for instance, or it could be even complex trauma from years of pain and disappointment or neglect. So when you start to feel it, to have that support, because it can be an intense experience to start feeling those feelings again. But when it comes up, that's such a healthy sign because it's basically your nervous system is saying, your nervous system is looking around your environment and it's saying, oh, maybe it's okay to feel now. Okay, it has realized that things have changed in my environment, environment and in my life. It's not the same as it was anymore. And the nervous system is very slow to get that message. Okay, we rationally will recognize things have changed in, in a second. It's so obvious for us. But the nervous system is not rational. It doesn't work on rationality. In fact, it's quite irrational at times. It sees its job as so important, which is keeping you safe, that it says, well, I, I'm not going to be bound by rationality. I have a job to do here and I'm going to do it regardless of rationality. So we want to start to help the nervous system realize that things have changed. Okay. And what we do is different processes with the nervous system from time to time. We will throw up old danger signals. Okay. There's that hypervigilance that we bring from the past. So any of these danger signals, we, our job really with this is to start calming the nervous system down. Once it feels safe and calm enough, it will start to relax. The emotions will come up. They'll be met now with an awareness of these are actually legacy feelings from the past. It's not necessarily about my current life at all. These are old feelings. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why I'm feeling like this, but these emotions are here and that's why. These are old things that I can deal with now. So I really just want you to take away from this video today 
and in, in answering this question also for this person. It's not a void. We can't fill it. it. It's impossible to fill it, right? There's also there's already an active process taking place, very interesting, in its own right, and uh, if we can be aware of that, it'll make processing and starting to heal and feel some of these feelings a lot easier for us. So, I hope that was a useful video. I know a few people have asked me to talk more about dissociation because I mean it's such a common thing nowadays. A lot of us are going through this, but you know. It's a process. We need to be very patient with this process of dissociation. It's not something that's super quick because the nervous system takes time. If it gets itself in a guarded posture or a defensive posture at some point in the past, it takes quite a long time for it to, to relinquish that defensive posture. Okay, so it's a process that takes place over time. And um, in any case, I hope this was a useful video. And thanks again for joining me here. I always appreciate it. And. Um, Take care and I'll see you again soon.